Oh, okay. I think everyone is back to the main session. Uh, once again, I want to welcome everyone to Silicon Valley SDA Church. I really hope that the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts so that we can get to discover something that we're supposed to discover this time. Before we start, let's have another word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you very much for giving us this great chance that we can hear your voice together. May the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts, not the speaker's voice, but may the voice of the Holy Spirit be heard by everyone who is here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we are in the series, Seeing What God Sees. The lessons that I've learned from Irun that I want to share with you. So I entitled, Seeing What God Sees. This is one of the definitions of faith. So I really hope that through this, fa uh, through this series, uh, we can improve or we can enhance our faith. Well, last week I talked about God knew but. So the title was God knew but. I think you may be reminded of what I talked about under that title. So God basically knew everything that would happen but still He loved us Still, he decided to have us. And that's why we are here. And um, what I want to share with you today, well, the message is entitled, Are you whole? Are you whole? Before I start today's message, I'd like to talk to you about uh, what would have been better if I had spoken uh, to you about it in the beginning of this series. Well, this is not directly related to today's message, but uh, this will tell us the purpose of this series. Basically, the purpose of all the sermons, actually. Um, what do you think is the purpose of fasting? I've actually once shared uh, this with you. Some people think that by fasting, we can focus more on the spiritual things with enhanced mind because of fasting, because of the empty stomach, right? Uh, if we have our empty stomach, then it, it will actually affect our brain, our mind. But it's not about focusing on spiritual things with enhanced mind because of fasting. It is true that we get to have clearer mind when we fast and also we can have the function of digest restored. Yes, it's true. And that way, fasting helps us be healthier. So there are mental like, you know, we have clearer mind. So there are mental and physical benefits that we can get when we fast. But these are byproducts of fasting, so to speak. Not the product that God wants, God expects to see. So the purpose of fasting is about realizing that we are beings that cannot live without what God provides. When we cut off the foods that we every day eat, we start realizing, I mean, we instantly we start feeling we are hungry, right? And after a couple of more days, we start starving. And after a couple of days, you know, we may think that, oh, I think I'll die. So, the purpose of fasting is about realizing we are beings that cannot live, cannot sustain our life without 
what God provides us with. You know, it's just how we were created. We have to intake food in order to sustain our life. Something outside our body should come into our body because we have nothing in us that can sustain our life. That's exactly what Jesus experienced when he was fasting in the wilderness for 40 days. You know, in the entire universe, he is the only self-life-sustaining being. And in the wilderness, he was being a totally contingent or dependent being. So after the 40 days of fasting, Jesus must have realized what it meant to cut off the life coming from God. And Jesus said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Well, I think the reason why Jesus was able to say this is because he fasted for 40 days and then he started realizing that we really need something that comes from God. I mean, he experienced it with the food. So he cut off all the food for 40 days and he got weaker and weaker, weaker. And they realized, oh, this body cannot stand, cannot endure without the food, without the resource of energy that God provides with us. So this should lead us to the lesson that God wants to teach us, fasting. What is it? So it's about realizing we are poor in spirit. In other words, it's about realizing that we are beings that cannot sustain our spiritual life without what God provides us with. We have nothing in our heart that can sustain our goodness, our light. Because the Bible says the light is our life. You know, John describe, uh, describes this in John chapter 1. So, if physical fasting does not lead us to the spiritual meaning of fasting, it has not served its purpose. Of course, there are benefits that we can benefit from fasting. We can have clearer mind. We can have healthier body. But if we stop there, then we are missing the most important purpose of fasting. When we fast without getting to the spiritual meaning of fasting, we receive our reward of fasting only in this world. It's only good for this world. Jesus once said, when he was talking about fasting, when you fast, do not look somber, as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others their fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. What does it mean that they, they have received their reward in full? They received respect from people. Because at the time, it was considered a really good religious kind of ritual to fast two or three days a week. So they did it. So when people saw the religious leaders fast every now and then, they were showing like great respect. And also, when they fasted, they must have had clearer mind and healthier body. They must have received the blessing of health and discerning mind. You know, actually, this is what other uh, people would love to have. I mean, when, when people look at Jewish people, they have so intelligent mind, they kind of rule the world. You know, all the Nobel Prizes are given to Jewish people and stuff, 
right? We are sometimes very impressed the way they are educated. Like how they memorize the whole Bible and stuff. And people like to say that the reason why Jewish produce such successful people is because of all this. Of course, they fast and they are rewarded with the blessing of the intelligence, with the clearer mind and healthier body. But it is that they have received their reward in full here in this world. We shouldn't receive our reward in full here in this world. We shouldn't. We should have something to be rewarded at the land that God promised. So I really hope that what I'm sharing with you is something that will impress you, that will come upon you, so that it may lead to the spiritual lesson for the reward that we will get when we get to the promised land. I don't want to stay in this worldly level. Of course, when we experience these things, of course, we get to learn something, right? But if the lessons that we get to learn are the lessons that are helpful only for this world, then it's not really served its purpose. So this is the picture of Rooney taken like a few weeks after she was born. I think two or three weeks after she was born. So isn't she cute? Um, and the picture next to Rooney is the picture of Irun taken a few weeks after he was born. Um, the more we compare their photos, the more we we realize that they look the same. I mean, they look very similar. You know what? If Irun didn't have the syndrome, the Trisha Collins syndrome, they would have looked as if they are twins. Especially when I look at uh, their toes, you know, they look pretty much the same. The moment Irun was born, the OBGY doctor put him uh, on mom's tummy for a little while. And then, and then she moved Irun to the bed, prepared uh, for the newborn. Um, at the time, I was so worried about my wife because it was right after uh, Irun came out of... of uh, his mom. So I didn't notice anything, um, anything unusual or abnormal about his appearance. But um, even in pain, my wife noticed something different about Irun. I think this is why people say moms are different from dads. Even though he, she was in such a pain when she saw, I mean, she didn't even hold uh, Irun with, his, uh, with her arms, but the moment she saw the baby on her tummy, she said to me, oh, is he okay? He looks a little different. He looks a little unusual. But I said, no, 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 no. He, he is okay. He is okay. And he was moved to the bed, prepared for the newborn. And the nurses and the doctor was there to do some examinations and stuff. But the pediatrician stood beside the baby bed looking at Irun for quite a while with his arms crossed. Well, I didn't take the picture of the pediatrician, but he was standing beside the bed, looking at the baby with his arms crossed, as if he was thinking about 
or how should I tell the parents about this situation? I didn't know that he was thinking that, but you know, when uh, after some time he walked over to us and started saying something, and then I realized, oh, this was the reason why the pediatrician was standing there looking at Irun with his arms crossed for a while. The pediatrician said, uh, he seems to be, and he seems to uh, need more examination, but he seems to have a kind of disorder that is called Twitcher Collins. At that time, me and my wife had no idea what Twitcher Collins is, so we didn't understand what he was talking about. So I, I totally missed the word Twitcher Collins, and I was asking, oh, are you saying that there is a problem with my boy? So one thing I sensed was that there was something wrong with him. And the next morning, my wife and I had two doctors come to our room, one pediatrician and one genetic doctor, and explain the situation. Um, he was not in harmony with the image of what a normal baby would look like. And that's why the pediatrician was kind of sensing, detecting something different. And also the, the pediatrician that came uh, the next morning and the genetic doctor, they uh, stopped by the bed uh, site to see Irun and then came over to our room. Um, so Irun had uh, something different, unlike a normal baby. So it was by looking at the baby and discovering something different from a normal image that um, they and we discovered the, the, the issues. Of course, some babies have issues that are not visible, so they cannot be detected by only by looking. So some parents find out the problems, I mean, sometime after babies are discharged. But anyway, we found out that he has um, these issues. So the mainly, he has facial bone issue. So his, his face, uh, the bone uh, was not developed fully. And because of this, he has all these issues. Breathing issue, uh, feeding, and hearing, and speaking. Well, because of uh, the cleft palate, breathing ish, uh, the breathing and feeding and speaking, and because of the, um, the, the ear, uh, hearing issue. So all this is mainly because of the unusual development of the facial bone. So from the moment we discovered these issues, we started to see what we can do to make it right, to make him grow properly. So the first thing that was done, that had to be done, was NG tube, uh, which is uh, placed through the nose to the stomach because he needs to be fed anyway to maintain his life. So we've been working so hard to make things right. Of course, as, as time went by, we found more issues. Of course, it was not uh, at all at once that we found all the issues, but you know, as time went by, we found one issue, and some, some time after, we find another issue, so the list of issues that I, uh, that I showed you in the previous slide, those were the issues that we got to uh, discover as time went by. And now, many people are involved in this process. Many medical staff are involved in this process because this will affect his whole life. We haven't even touched the hearing facial bone issues because of more essential issues. Breathing and feeding issues are life-related issues, right? Life-threatening sometimes issues. I have already told you we had to see urine turning blue because of ox oxygen desaturation. So that's life-related. Uh, so we have to take care, we had to take care of the issue first. So this process of taking care of all the issues, 
the, the, the process of fixing all the problems started right away because he is not whole. Any parents who have a baby like Irun would do the same thing as we are doing. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the next room, uh, there was a baby who was only a couple of days old who had cleft palate like Irun. So um, he had to get the same oral plate as Irun's. So they started the process, the pr procedure right away. So anyone would do, would do the same thing as we are doing. We didn't delay the process. No one wouldn't delay the process. So the moment we discovered that there was something wrong, we started the process of fixing it. Let me ask you one question. Are you whole? Well, of course, we're not. You know, sometimes we may think that I'm okay. I'm pretty sound. I'm pretty whole. But we're not. What makes me so certain that we're not whole? How do we know? How do I know that we're not whole? We should compare ourselves to the normal image of God. We should compare to the image of God. Just like my wife was able to notice the difference Irun had comparing him to other normal babies because she had the normal image in her mind that you know a baby should look like. Right? Oh, this a little different. Oh, this a little different. Oh, this a little different. Just like the pediatrician who stood at the bedside and took a close look at Irun comparing to a normal baby. What is the normal image of God that we should compare ourselves to? Where can we find the perfect image that we can compare to? That is the cross. It is in the person of Christ hung on the cross that the perfect image of God is revealed to the whole universe. Of course, his whole life shows us the perfect image of God, but it was not until the cross that what he said and what he taught was actually made come true, was actually revealed to the whole universe. So when we look at the cross, when we look at the perfect image of who God created and intended to be, we start realizing we are a little different. Here, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 6, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. You know, glory is used in the Bible almost as the synonymous of character. So the knowledge of God's character, the knowledge of God's image is displayed in the face of Christ, hung on the cross. And we start realizing that we have sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. Only when we look at the cross, we start seeing what God sees. When we look at the perfect image of God, we should be able to realize our deformities immediately. Because God's image, the normal image, usual image is seeking others good. Giving myself to others. That's the image of God. Well, of course, in this world, in this physical world, having the hard palate is a normal thing, right? So when we see no palate, then that's a problem. In this world, we have to this outward ear, that's normal. But if, if uh, there's something wrong with the ear, there's a problem. Seeking others good is a normal thing in the kingdom of God. In the original world that God created, 
So when we see no good things in our heart, so when we see ourselves so selfish, that's the time that we see our disorder in deformity. We were created in the image of God, yes, and yet we are born with the image lost, broken. So we have the disorder from our birth. The moment we realize this, we should start the process of fixing it. It's like the process even started as soon as the problem was detected. Because this will affect his whole life. When we look at the cross, when we realize the perfect image of God, also when we realize that we fall short, there's an issue. We have an issue. We have problems. We have to start the process right away. Because this process will affect our eternal life. Like I said, all the, process, all the procedures that Irun is having will affect his whole life. But we may be living our lives as if we have no issues. The question is, how much are we familiar with the normal image of God? Like I said, when my wife saw Irun on her tummy, instantly realized something different because we are so familiar with the normal image of what a baby should look like, right? So the question is, how much are we familiar with the normal image of God? How much are we familiar with the perfect image of God? Unless we're aware of the perfect image of God, Unless we have the desire to restore it, we wouldn't start the process of fixing it. So, the author of Hebrews says that, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom you acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. We have to fix our thoughts on Jesus. Why? Because we really need to know what the perfect image of God looks like. We should be very familiar with it. And that's how we can start the process of fixing it when we realize that we have an issue. Every time when we sense that there is an issue, in other words, every time when we are selfish, we have to fix our thoughts on Jesus and then we should realize that, oh, this is an issue. What should I do? In another place, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of faith. But we are so saturated with sin that we sometimes are very likely to forget who we really are. And that's exactly the time that we have to turn our eyes to the cross and see the perfect image of God. As we try to fix Irun's issues, a question dawned on me. What am I doing to fix the broken image of God in me? Irun is going through a lot of procedures, a lot of like, surgeries to make it right. Irun is having every day the oral plate and trach and G-tube cleaned and uh, once a week changed. That way he can stay healthy and he can get better and better and he can have all issues resolved and fixed. What can we do to fix it? Actually, it is not Irun himself doing all the procedure, procedures and all the process, but it is us. It is us. Irun can do nothing about it. Just like that, there's nothing we can do to fix it. 
Yun is now having his father, his mother, fix it. So we are working with the team to fix it. It is not himself, it's us. So we should have our father, the great physician, fix it. Irun may not be aware of what's happening to him, but he's getting better and he will eventually get better. When we have our father fix us, we may not be aware of the process. He may not be aware of what's happening, but we are getting better and we will get better. You know, once Jesus said that in John chapter 3, verse 8, the wind blows wherever it pleases, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. We're not like Irun, not like the soils that I talked about, the four different soils in the, in the parable of the sower. We have to choose to have God fix us. Of course, Irun didn't choose to have us fix him. We chose it. But uh, in our case, it's a little bit different. We have to choose to have God fix us. Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. In Revelation 3, verse 20, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with the person and they with me. As I wrap up today's sermon, we sometimes live our lives completely forgetting who we are. Of course, like I said uh, in the previous sermons, when we see our kids, we see ourselves through our kids, and then, you know, we get to see who we really are. But, you know what? We really need to see the perfect image. That way, we can have the desire to restore the image. If we are not familiar with the perfect image of God, then we may not want to start the process of fixing it. So today I really hope and pray that we look at the cross and see the perfect image of God shown in the face of Jesus so that we can have the desire to fix the problem.